This is Pro-Life Blasphemy episode 15 and I'm going to show you one of the more um, how do I want to call it evil mistranslations in the Bible that give rise to the blasphemy of pro-life. Pro-life pro is the most blasphemous thing to come out of Christendom. For 3300 years we knew the Bible said you're not alive until born and then in 1978, as I showed in the previous episode of Pro-Life, Pro-Life 14, you can see for yourself that in 1978, Jerry Falwell invented the lie of abortion equals murder. It does not equal murder. The Bible is very clear about that. But, in order to get your money and to get political power, the preachers lie to you. Now, you're going to have to choose between the Word of God or these lying preachers. And, of course, the lying preachers all back Trump, so what does that tell you? So now I'm going to show you really baldly the lie. And we're going to look at two verses. The first one is up on the screen now, Luke 1.15, and then also Luke 1.41, because if you look only at the translation, you get the opposite meaning versus what the Bible says. So now we're going to look at it. You will see in the lower left hand corner this preposition, it's called ek. And if you were a student in seminary, you would be required to get a book by a guy named William Mounts about Bible Greek. That would be something you'd have to learn in seminary in first year Greek. And if you look in his appendix, you would see this word, ek. Okay? Let me... Let me make the lower... I'm, that's going to stay static because it's only this word, ek, which unfortunately in Bible Works 9, which is on screen now, this is a tool that all pastors... Well, a lot of pastors use. Um, it's much better than Logos. E, if, if you can look, see where my mouse is moving around? You have E-K, ek. Alright? Ek means out from, away from. And if you look here in the lower corner, see it says from, out of, out from, forth from, beyond. It is used as a synonym for the Hebrew min, which also means beyond, out from, away from. Okay? This word, I guess I have to fix this. Right up here, is koilia, and it means womb. If I could just get that stupid thing to work there. You can see in the lower corner, see when you put your mouse, in, in Bible works, if you put your mouse over a word, it shows what the Greek is. See koilia here in the lower, see? Belly is not, is not it. It means the womb, okay? See, this is, this is, um, it's betin. This is betin. It's not belly. It's womb. Okay. And then rackum. Which the, yeah, here it is. Here's rackum. These are the two Hebrew words in the Old Testament that koilia is used to translate. And it mean, and it's used to mean womb. Okay. It can mean other things too, but it's here and in most places in the Old Testament. It's used to mean womb. Okay. So, ek means out from, away from, as we've seen before. And then koilias is the genitive form, because ek takes the genitive, of womb. So it's outside the womb. Outside it. Not inside it. Outside it. But the liars in the NAU say, while yet in his mother's womb. There's no yet, and it's not in. It's ek. See? This is the word for yet. Outside. 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 Outside the womb. Outside. Unfortunately, Bible works uses stupid blue like Adobe. So it's ek koilias. Outside the womb. Yet. In other words, not until. Until. He's not. There's no. There's no filling of the spirit inside the womb. 
it's filling of the spirit outside the womb because he's not a human being the Holy Spirit only fills humans you're not human in the womb it's outside the womb so yet means outside once he's born he will be filled with the spirit okay that's what the Greek says this is the whole phrase yet outside okay yet has the function of until even in English so he will be filled with the spirit once outside the womb not until then okay very expressly that's what the Greek says but the jerks the liars who want your money because they know you get emotional when you see those body parts developing they say why well, yet inside his mother's womb but that's not what it means so the NAU translation is the NASB the latest version of it lies this one this is King James version even from it means out from the word from and this is something you would learn from mounts if you were in seminary first year seminary and you get mounts's Bible basics book okay they he is very adamant about this when you see the word ek it's outside you should always translate this out from separated from away from not just from in English from has the connotation of from inside but that's not what the preposition means okay see and this is a lie and I've a even before he is born that's a flat reversal of what the text says these people who translated it are lying against the Word of God okay they're lying against it because they know you're so emotional you see those body parts developing and they want your money so they're gonna cater to your stupidity okay see but the Latin doesn't say this see this is ex utero it's not an utero it's ex you know utero means womb right so the Latin is translating coilea the way it should and it's ex now you know what ex libris means, right? In Latin, out from, okay? This is out from. Ex, you know, like you got divorced, your ex, okay? Outside, okay? Outside his mother's womb. There it is, in Latin. So the Latin had no trouble translating it that way. Yeah, because the Catholic Church never called abortion murder, okay? 3,300 years of Jewish Judeo-Christian law never called abortion murder. Never. Okay? Never. See? Ad hoc ex. So that's even stronger. That's Latin. This is the Latin. Okay? This is the Vulgate online. This is the Vulgate which is not online. The, you know, the hardback. And I forget which version of the Vulgate this one is. Let's find out. Move it down a little. It's the the Clementine Vulgate. That's the Clementine Vulgate. So it adds this word. Well, they all have it. Odd hook X. All right. And these are the various Bible manuscripts. Okay. And they all have at the echoileas. So they all have the same phrase once outside the womb not before and of course this is the, the um, Peshitta which you know I'm not going to go through that okay but they all have the same phrasing different slightly different diacritics but the same phrasing eti ek koilia so it's not like we have any See, if this said E-N instead of e -ek, then maybe you could make an argument about it. But you can't. Because it's e -ek. See, all the way through. Alright? Of course, Paul says the same thing when he's talking about himself. Okay, but I digress. So you get the point? This is saying once, eti is once, for idiomatic English, outside the womb of his this is mother matros out his okay so this is a lie 
This is KG. It's supposed to say out from. This is a complete lie. These are the main, you know, Bibles that are used. I've got a whole bunch of them, but I'm not going to show them all. But as you can see in the Latin, it's ex utero. And, you know, even the stupidest American can remember ex means outside and remembers utero as uterus. That's where we get the word from. Okay, so the Latin you can read outside the womb. Matris, mother, his. Okay? So he will be filled with his spirit outside the womb, and these people are lying to you. Jerry Falwell lied to you. He lied to you deliberately to get political power, that testimony from the guy who gave him the idea to lie is in Pro-Life Blasphemy episode 14. Okay, the link to the PBS series where Jerry Falwell is talking and the guy who gave him the idea to pretend that abortion was murder to get political power is talking. You can see it in their own words. I had no idea that that video existed until a couple months ago. But here you see the lies kind of earlier. But even when it was earlier, they didn't call it murder until Jerry Falwell. Okay? So, that's Luke 115. You have to remember this. He is going to be filled with the Spirit outside the womb, not inside. You with me so far? Outside. In other words, there's no Holy Spirit filling you inside the womb. So now we go to verse 41, which some ding-dong who hates God and wants to get all emotional said, Oh, well, see, the baby leapt in her womb. No, the baby didn't do any leaping. It was Elizabeth who was filled with the Holy Spirit. Her emotional reaction to that sent the urge, the emotion, through the placenta, through a process that any ob can tell you is called reflex motility. And it made the baby's parts jump. But it's not a baby yet. And the reason why you know that is this word here, that they, they mistranslate baby it's not a baby. It's a brephos. See, look. Unborn child embryo fetus. Not a baby. A fetus. You see? So they, again, mistranslate it as baby. And it's Elizabeth, not the fetus, that's filled with the Holy Spirit. And you can know that because you just saw John, uh, Luke 1.15 telling you that he will be filled with the Spirit outside the womb, not inside. Okay? So the word baby isn't baby, it's fetus. And the one who's filled with the Spirit is Elizabeth, not the kid. Because it's not a kid yet. Because the, pro the prophecy given to, Elizabeth, to Zacharias was that once born... John will be filled with the Spirit because it's not a baby until it's born. You get that? Okay? See? That is the fetus. And see, here's the word in. In. I can't get the stupid mouse to work. In. With, with unreadable blue. In the womb. Okay? In te kolia, koliai. Okay? That's in the womb. That's definitely in the womb, but it's not a baby. See, look at the lower left-hand corner. Brephos. It means an unborn, a fetus. And it's Elizabeth, not the brephos that is filled with the spirit. You see that? So anybody who tries to use Luke 141 or Luke 115 claiming that there is a baby that's alive in the womb is a flat liar against the word of God and hates God. Doesn't even bother to look it up. Because honey, if you ain't looking it up in the original Hebrew and Greek, you don't know Bible. Peace out.